perfectly normal radio. It sounds a little something like this. If lying is wrong, are white lies okay? White They're all right. The passion. They're all right. They're all right. They're great because they're white. Yeah. <laughs> why else would they be called white lies? They're obviously or, better than all the rest of the lies. Yeah. <laughs> if they weren't good, why would you call them white? Yeah. I, think this, uh, I think this question is stupid. Welcome to Perfectly Normal Radio, which is absolutely perfect, totally normal, and definitely radio. So far, we've been establishing a beachhead. We've been tackling issues, getting out of the weeds, and other such phrases that let us go about our business as usual with the camouflage of focus and meaning, purpose and determination, buckaroo bonsai across the eighth dimension. You know, familiar territory. Today, we have case three out of four, in case you were wondering, of our Carmen San Diego series, where we've been learning all sorts of stuff about the world, its cultures, and how we should have been including pictures of the weirdos that pop up in this game, so it doesn't seem like our only weapon against crime is racial profiling. Which it's not. We also plant evidence, consult power crystals, and lie about stuff when it's not even necessary. Oh, also, if you hear a bit of hiss in the background, it's because you didn't wear your hearing protection when you should have worn your hearing protection. It's got nothing to do with the noise reduction not wanting to do its job this week. Or recording methods at the time. Anyway, enjoy! National treasure stolen from Port Mosby? Phil Mosby? Phil Mosby. The treasure has been identified as an ancient tribal totem. Nice. Male suspect reported at the scene of the crime. Get arrested by Sunday. I will get the warrant this time, I promise. I fucking promise. So what we this know is the last the goddamn time, Chris Lee! Mail. That's what we know so far. So as we can find out about this asshole. Let's check this motherfucker out. My sources tell me he flew off in a plane with a blue and white flag on his wing. He's Israeli! Carmen San Diego's behind the Munich Massacre. <gasps> I liked the ring he had on. Okay, okay. So he had a ring on it. The Pope's ring. The Pope's ring that said tricky in diamonds. Went across all five of his knuckles. Five knuckles. Now the two suspects. The black guy and the other black guy. David, you could have just been racist up front. You didn't need to waste didn't all this goddamn time and money. He is... Oh, that's not where I thought it It turns be. out it was two black males. Five foot six to six foot seven. Age 18 to 45. Poches, stamps, and tours, and San Marino. Oh, industrial. Oh. Industries. Poches, stamps, and tourism. The two largest industries. This tiny country's full name is the... Most... Oh, yes, okay. Bling, bong, bling, bong, bling, 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 bling. There he goes. He's an asshole. He snuck out right in front of us because we're not very good at being cops. I hate pepperoni. All I know is that he asked if he would have to take the shoes off in Hindu temples. Gee, I wonder where he's going. He's Asian. Uh, this is the part where you're in Nepal. Nepal. He's in Nepal. He is in Nepal. That's not a country. It is a country. I don't recognize it. It's some kind of goddamn dick waggling contest with City Hall. What's going on, David? I'm trying to figure out who the bad guy is. It's either Nick or Scar. Nick or Scar. Nick or Scar. Oh, that sounds like a racist term that has to do with automobiles. It does. Nick or Scar is what he meant, yes. ladies and gentlemen, of the home listening jury. I got you, Sam, so I now have a warrant to arrest this guy. He's in Nepal, though. So, did they ever actually, like, specify what kind of, what agency you work for, or? Uh, in Nepal, it always comes at the end of it. Let's see, so the capital of Nepal, Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Oh, Kathmandu. oh, has a population of four hundred twenty-two thousand. It's located in the Himalayan mountains and is Nepal, Nepal, Nepal. Nipple. Nipple's only large city. It has a sports club though, and it got the sombrero. The person you're looking for was here, and he said he was going to travel to the headwaters of the Press X. Oh. <laughs> Amazon. Yeah, okay, he's totally that motherfucker. I got a warrant for him, so now I just gotta catch his ass. That woman, she tasks us. She tasks us, and we shall have her. But first, or second, whatever. Y'all know a lot about NASCAR? I didn't. But it turns out that I, and no doubt many of you, 
have plenty of the prerequisites already on our resumes. So now it's time for a little on-the-job NASCAR training. If you've been waiting your whole life for me to tell you to crack that tall boy, well, buddy, it's time to crack that tall boy. You gotta say that everyone that watched NASCAR back home were gambling on the NASCAR. I hope so. Oh, they tell you. I hope there's something my going on family, there. My entire family watched NASCAR, and the, the main reason they were watching the NASCAR race is because they all had tickets on it. It's a very interesting way to gambling, though. Is it? Oh, yeah. So, like, you get tickets, and, like, they were color-coded, and it, it, that meant, like, a different amount that you could win. A different amount that you could win. Yeah, so like, dark blues were worth fifty, purples were worth a thousand if you won. And what you did is like you'd peel them off, you peel them like hours, and there'd be numbers on the bottom of them. There'd be like a six, twelve, uh, eight, nine, and the no those numbers meant where the people placed in polling. So if like such and such polled like sixth and tenth, and those were on your tickets, you had to pull for those two guys to come in like first or second. Or first and second, shit like that. And if you got it, you won the money on your ticket. Oh. Yeah. So who was who was who was running this? Usually veterans clubs. Uh. It's, it's it, I'd say it's probably quasi not legal. legal. Not legal at all. Absolutely not legal at all. Hmm. Like they also had those boards where you like would pay them out and you could poke holes in the board and pull up the number on the bottom. And if uh, you got the right number, you could scratch off another thing that would make it where you have a chance of winning more money. But uh, usually if you saw people that they pull, they were like, yeah, my favorite racer is this guy. That more than likely meant that that dude has made him money before, and that's why he pulls for him. <laughs> that's my take on it. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like letting chance be your Because I went, I went to races in North Carolina with my family. And let me tell you, on the infield part of it, like in the infield, where people were to camp and stuff like that, mm-hmm. it wasn't about the race. It was about drinking as much moonshine and smoking as much pot and whatever other methamphetamine you had and partying and grilling and probably fucking. That's all it was about. Yeah, I think I went one time everyone was like passed out from too much moonshine. But, you know, it, it, it was real interesting though. Because it was like a whole different thing. And, and those fuckers didn't care about that one thing. They didn't even know the fuckers, they didn't even pay attention to the race. They were just talking about whatever shit they wanted to talk about and just... Partying. It was just a gigantic fucking party on the inside of that place, man. See, you love booze and cars. Everyone loves booze and cars. Why do you think car accidents are like the third biggest killer of people, probably? Oh, sorry terrorism and racism. You're just not boner-inducing enough for us to actually dedicate our deaths to. But don't worry, guys. You'll do better during sweeps when the networks will try and shock us and frighten us with stuff we already knew. So don't fret. With all the new age enlightenment, wokeness, and technology-based interconnectedness, there'll be plenty of ignorance and hatred to go around. You're gonna be okay. As long as God is still great, Allah is still Akbar, and we're still at the covenant bargaining table, shit's gonna explode, and half-dead, half-naked children are not gonna get their cut of the Pulitzer Prize for the picture of them. Well, maybe it's not poor taste to ask a dying people to sign waivers. I'm gonna pray on that. While you guys pray on the second half of this, Carmen Sandiego in the case of the missing talkie part punchline. In the Amazon. I saw the person you were looking for. And he asked for a map of the Amazon. He was wearing a fancy ring. See what their marketplace looks like. That is not the kind of guy to see in their marketplace. He looks very uh, pedophile-y. That guy is not with the CIA, David. He's not. That guy is not... Part of the Central Intelligence Agency. Huh. Or a rare golden parkit. Par- Par- Hawker. Parakeet. Par- he said he hated dangerous sports. Turns out he was killed with a cruel cam mallet. So in the oh, end, man. there was literally egg on his face. He's in Rio de Janeiro. Did you say Amazon? Was that the, it did say Amazon, right? Rio barely knew him. Oh. While the mid-jumping Jack Jesus makes us all feel better about ourselves. Uh, uh, he's doing his dance, doing his dance, doing his dance. Because Jesus was kind of about all that, like, you know, shit he talked about, but he's mostly about getting a good stretch in the morning. On the desert. He says, get up in Rio and go, ah! Yeah. Yeah. Is he going, oh, so he's going back to Iceland. Going back to Iceland. Iceland. I lay a lamp. Iceland. 
going yeah, back to hair. Iceland. No, I don't think so. Going back to Reykjavik. 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 Going back to Reykjavik. No. I don't think so. What are you gonna do? Lock. Oh shit! Region. Watch out! White people, it's just an axe! Get him! Get him! Get him! Get him, you bastards! Yeah! I got him! There's a good chance we have a warrant for your arrest! See, like, Interpol. I'd like to thank you for your good work. Good case. Good job, David. You have earned a promotion. <laughs> All right, my next rank is Sleuth. We at Interpol want to ask What's you one thank you for this. Like a, I guess a, you know, detective? Yes. For your next cases until you're It just back. sounds very cases. derogative. It's something they would say about Batman in the 60s. That looks like a, one of those new shit shack apartments in Seattle. <laughs> it does. <laughs> we heard poverty is really in right now. So we give you the shithole. And everyone claps very loud because everyone wants to live in a shithole. Stay at the Loft by Greg Peterson. The Loft by Greg Peterson offers everything you want to live <laughs> and enjoy your life. A chair, a bed, part of a table. A swimming pool. Movie stars. Reasonable access to bathroom facilities. And this has been Perfectly Normal Radio. You can find this program, among other fun things, at personorpersons.com. Once again, that's personorpersons.com. Or look for Perfectly Normal Radio wherever you look for podcasts. The old thanks again and more are in the show annotations, so be sure and drink your Ovaltine over at personorpersons.com for stuff you might want to know about stuff we might want to tell you. Like, thanks for listening. I already don't care, and you're making it so much worse.